Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of This Member Podcast. I'm your host, Perry. And with me this week is the microphone extraordinaire. <laughs> Chad Perkins of It's Bourbon Night. This is bad. It's Am I not supposed to do beautiful that? etiquette. Yeah? I'm going to bump it up to 300% just oh, to good. see. Yeah. Good. Compress re- the heck out of it and just... It's really good uh, <laughs> ASMR or whatever is, it's called. Is it, though? Yeah. It's the real question. Sure. Fair enough. Um, I had an intro and I forgot it for a second. Cool. If you are here for the first time, maybe because of Chad or you've just stumbled across the podcast, thank you so much for being here. If you're returning... Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're doing really well. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the show, of course. Leave us a rating and review. Share with your friends. Uh, go check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash this my bourbon podcast. We're on the way to a thousand subs. Um, got a new video coming out this week as well, which is the first in a series on why blank bourbon is the best value. So really excited. Yeah. This first one's on rare breed. Oh, so, yeah. Well, that's. I <laughs> came out of the gate swinging. That's a softball yeah. right there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we normally start the show with Flying Blind, which I have actually done for you. Ah, sitting in, in the that with this in the it's Bourbon Night glass right okay. there, which uh, is, was not oh, sold nice. to me, but was a uh, we'll, we'll call it a, a a faulty product. Maybe looks a little irregular, little little wonky. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I think I might have picked that up at your wedding, actually. Ah, yeah, we would have only had <laughs> irregular and uh, call them sec- what do they call them? Like second hands or um, scratch and dent? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We just had like sec- scratch and dents at the wedding because we knew <laughs> people were going to take them. You're either going to break them or take them or both. Yep. Yeah. Take them then break them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get some I get some fruit on that. It smells familiar. Also, I'm really sorry. I'm still I'm not sick. I'm just congested at the moment. Yeah, that's what he so. says. We'll wait wait a couple of days and then I'll tell you that I'm sick. I'm not contagious, <laughs> man. That's about as loud as my voice can go too. Otherwise I'm just gonna lose it. Oh, I doubt yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's like it's like baking bread, but also maybe like some peaches on the stove or something. Yeah. Some, some type of like... Kind of peach puree mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. It smells like baby food. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just, yeah, I got, you got to go with what you know, you know? Uh, it's just recency bias, I guess. Yeah. More than anything. A little light. Mm-hmm. Good starter. It is. I haven't had this in a while. I know you haven't had it in a while either, but... You were a little bummed when I found this because there wasn't any more, oh. and it was at a, it was at a new liquor store in Richmond, mm-hmm. which made no sense hmm. why they had this. Uh, but it's eighty proof wild turkey. Oh, <laughs> from two thousand seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Not a whole lot of it left. Hmm. But um, doesn't really drink much like turkey. It. Yeah. At all. Well, that proof is hard. It's hard to find the turkey in the it's 80 hard, proof. It's hard to find the turkey. Hard to find the turkey. Or in the 81 proof. And today's today's proof. I have not had 81 proof in a <laughs> hot minute. I think we bought a bottle for the 50 under 25, uh, which was our first episode five years ago. I don't think we bought a bottle since then. <laughs> I'm not entirely surprised We probably that. still have that bottle. Yeah. Half drank. You could Half just... Drunk. You know, offer it up as a, a, a reward on Patreon or something. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Try to thin the I'll herd. Bring in some subscribers. <laughs> so we're we're kind of talking about not just turkey this episode, but also we're we're going to be reviewing the single cask nation wild turkey nine year warehouse G release that um, just came out. Uh, it was part of a lottery through single cask nation. That's how they do all of their um, their special or new releases, I guess. Uh, I, I want to talk about, we'll get to it in a second, but just the the notion of something like Single Cask Nation and, and whether it's good or bad for whiskey at the moment and um, how do we view their practices. And I'll, I'll lay it all out for you, too, because I know you don't. Give us some, give us some backstory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but what have you been drinking recently? Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, just today we were drinking on some things that we nominated ourselves for our best 
uh, bourbon and rice to drink on during the summer. Mm-hmm. So we kind of, you know, you go and you look through the collection. You're like, I think that might be a contender. Or, you know, we've written things down as we've drank on things. And we're like, oh, we need to remember this for the summer list. So today we went and we tried a bunch of them yeah. to, to see what made the cut. So that's most recently what I've been drinking on. Um, Recreationally? <laughs> that's a way to put it. <laughs> yeah, rec- <laughs> recreational drinking. Uh, I've been drinking on this here Fourgate pick of ours, the rye. It's it's. I'm super excited to yeah, try that. That's pretty tasty. Yeah. Do you know where it was sourced from? Yeah, MGP. Oh, cool. It's a 95.5 awesome. eight-year rye that's then... Um, rested in a toasted barrel that's uh, made specifically for it by Kelvin Cooperage. Wow. Yeah. So they've got a good re- relationship with Kelvin, and uh, they made this barrel specifically for uh, for resting this 95.5. So it's not just, wow. you know, a stock 95.5 MGP rye. It's, it's transformed in that second barrel. And yeah. It's good. Really cool. Yeah. I can't wait to try it mm-hmm. here in a bit. Um, we just got back from... I wouldn't call it a vacation for myself because I was working the entire time, uh, but a trip, I guess, to Florida. And I, I, I went to one liquor store the entire time because of how busy I was. Wow! And I, I'd, I'd been looking for it for a while, and finally found Ancient Ancient H mm. Ten Star. <laughs> Not even the ten year. I was nice. a little bummed. I was a little bummed that it wasn't the ten year. But 10 Star was still nice to find. I mean, like, I've never even had it. I don't think I've seen it in Lexington, in Kentucky. I don't think it's sold in Kentucky. At all? Well, at least not anymore. I I mean, I guess that's fair. I've never seen AAA in Lexington (laughs) since I started. Cars never broken down. Triple (laughs) A? That was low hanging fruit there. Anyway, (laughs) um, yeah, I mean, I, I have always just kind of glanced to see if it was going to be somewhere out of state but i mean i was i was pretty excited about it just because it was like 30 dollars and yeah i mean it's you know it's a plastic candle what are you gonna do 36 month old (laughs) buffalo trace but it's one more ancient than (laughs) just (laughs) our ancient age i like it i mean i don't have any problem with it Mm -hmm. you know i mean i know yeah it is at least three years old but I mean, it's still got a pretty good, robust flavor profile to yeah. it. I mean, it's it's nothing to really turn your nose up at. No, no, I would say. So, uh, other than that, I brought a bottle of ECBP just to have during the evenings. Nice. So, that's pretty much it. Yeah. You want to talk about some uh, single cast nation? Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So, we'll we'll get to the review in a minute. I want to kind of keep us on flavor profile, though with turkey stuff. I just grabbed a handle of 101. Um, I've got this blend here too. It's not Knob Creek, um, but it, it's in a Knob Creek bottle. It's place. in a Knob Creek bottle. Um, but it was, I, I, I just kind of grabbed a whole bunch of stuff that was at a rare bird 101 meetup a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and just blended it in the bottle together. I don't know if you've had it yet or not. I don't think so. I've had, I mean, it's been around for, for a minute. So, I mean, we can start with 101 and try that before we get to the single barrel if you want. Sure. Or yeah, whatever. I know that, you know, what, what did I just hit? The oh, Russells. That's the Russells. Okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> um, by the way, new bottle design. Yay or nay? Nay. <laughs> I don't think it looks good in the handle. I think it looks great in the 750. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was really funny that they started teasing this big announcement for their new bottle design and it had either been out on the TTB for, you know, half a year or people were already finding it in their, uh, in their liquor stores. Yeah. But I just don't, I don't like the handle. I don't like the handle at all. I think it looks really bare and sad. Yeah. I don't like the 750. I, just at all at all yeah, yeah i thought they they had a, a good thing going i guess and i don't know that's all right so single cask nation yes so they are this independent group that buys up barrels to then kind of sell under their own label 
right? That's a very quick and dirty way of describing what they do and who they are. Mostly, they sell Scotch and Irish whiskeys. Um, there's always kind of a little extra thing to it, whether it's you know double barreled or full proof, or excuse me, barrel proof. Whereas you know scotches are not, you know, they're usually like eighty, eighty six, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and in this case, it's a barrel proof wild turkey, so higher proof than rare breed mm -hmm. and a single barrel. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, if this had gone to wild turkey as a single barrel, it would have been one hundred and ten proof. Or I guess 101 for American Spirit. Um, but the, the thing that I think could quickly turn people off from Single Cask Nation is not necessarily their business practices, but how they price their products. So, and we can talk about this more in the review if we need to. That was $101 before shipping. Cute. <laughs> 101. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I saw it. Um, but I they had me like hook, line, and sinker. You know? Already being a big turkey fan. And then something as unique as that. I was... I, I mean, I, I just bought it. I was very quick to make that decision. Um, if you were put in the same situation, do you think you would have been as quick to make that choice? To buy it? Yeah. Yeah, I probably would have just because... I've never owned one, and, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, if you want to be able to try turkey at Barrel Proof, unless you're going on a pick, this is going to be your only way to do it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. I mean, <clears throat> of course, Rare Breed sits as a Barrel Proof product. But yeah, but it's a batched. Yeah, exactly. So I guess there's just a, a, a single barrel Barrel Proof. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, that's, what's the proof on that one? Well, see, and that's how you it's, know that they m mainly deal <laughs> with the guys across pond because they only do ABV. Yeah. Uh, it's 57.7. So 114 plus this, another 115.4. plus another that 115.4? Yeah. yeah. So slightly under rare breed, mm -hmm. you know. But again, it's, it's that cast strength version of what uh, a Russell's Reserve warehouse G pick. Mm -hmm. would have been yeah um dave jennings did a little review of it said it was spectacular um said that the only thing you really were missing out on though if you had picked up a warehouse g russell's pick was just you know a few more months of age and some extra oak um some proof points i mean <laughs> it, it's it's a pretty clear-cut notion when you look at it at face value, but mm -hmm. I still think that there is value in the uniqueness of it. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm buying into the hype. I don't know if I'm buying just into the, um, the, the thrill of it all, I guess. But in, in, in general, do you care for the way that single cask nation approaches some of this stuff? Oh man! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, faux pas, dude. <laughs> Australia's calling me. Oh, good day, mate. Hello. Do you think it's Chris? I don't know. Chris, is your number? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dox him right on the pod. Um, that's weird. Yeah, I haven't gotten a robocall from Australia before. <laughs> Go ahead and put that on silent. Yeah, there good we go. call. Good call. Yeah. Uh, what was the question? The question was, uh, how do you feel about their business practices? Well, from what I've heard from you <laughs> and literally nobody else, uh, you know, it. I kind of envy them. Sure. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Price. Price would probably be the only the only issue. Yeah. Um, hundred hundred bucks. But when they're selling something, that's the only way you can get it. It's hard to blame. Uh, you know, a Russell's pick at one hundred ten proof is what nowadays sixty five dollars. Yeah. Maybe seventy even in some places. So. For, what, thirty bucks more. To get 
the un- unadulterated, you know, yeah. cast strength version of it doesn't shock me. <laughs> now, whether I like it or not, that's yeah, the that's thing, right. but it doesn't yeah. shock me. Now, if you said it's 150 bucks, we're like, oh, come on. <laughs> it didn't shock me. Yeah. So, I guess I would have to say, you know, I'm f- fine with it. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll say this, too. I think that by having those little gimmicks of cast strength European whiskeys or even just a cast strength turkey that you couldn't get anywhere else. Right. That makes it more appealing. And then you add in the fact that they've had a product like the pre-fire Heaven Hill that was 10 years old before it got to Scotland. And then it was 10 more years old, you know, aging in Scotland right? as well. Mm-hmm. That was a weird way of saying it's 20 years old. <laughs> it mellowed for 10 years in Scotland. Yeah. Um, that in and of itself is a huge draw to people. Sure. Um, and and it, it might come off a little predatory, potentially, when you think about the fact that, you know, there are so many people who want to try Dusty Product, especially Pre-Fire Heaven Hill, and that was like a $300 bottle, you know? That being said, there's not a whole lot of 20-year-old product out there, and the fact that you could get a 20-year-old Heaven Hill <laughs> at that price mm-hmm. at that time, and it was pre-fire. Yeah, is but not- what, what, what would been a downside for me is the fact that it spent 10 years in scotland like that's not going to be what a pre-fire heaven hill tasted like because it spent 10 years outside that's fair of the u.s like so you can't say i mean yeah you had pre-fire heaven hill but not anything like it would have tasted yeah before like um we have a whiskey broker 10-year heaven hill that spent all 10 years over in scotland and Mm. it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't taste like heaven hill bourbon it doesn't yeah. yeah i mean it's super cool to have i mean that's yeah of course very rare right to for it to have that experience but it's only going to be beneficial if the if the sum is better than the parts right and have, then, have you tried the the heaven hill no i have not from all right hold your horses <laughs> <laughs> this is a sample from the oh. Man with the plan. Okay. Fred Gilbert. Okay. So, uh, it's super low proof. It's like... 99.8. 94 point. That's a yeah. 4. 94 point. Yeah. Um, so, it's not going to throw our pallets off for a... <laughs> now, is that... I mean, is that what happened to it over in Scotland? It went down to 94.8? I guess. It doesn't seem like it would be cut to 94.8. That seems kind of weird. Unless that was a good proof for it. Yeah. I mean. Could be. <laughs> so it's listed as a 24-year. So it was... Oh, well, okay. So it 12, was 12, 12 here, 12 there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why I thought it was just 20 years. It's a bit nutty. You should be jumping for joy over that prospect. <laughs> well, it's a bit. Oh. Well... I mean, it smells pretty good. You're a bit nutty. <laughs> yeah. Come back in the century. Jeez Louise. It's awfully dark. It's 24 years old, man. Yeah. But it's not oaky like 24 years over here. See, I think... It tastes more like an 18-year-old. You don't get to taste an 18-year-old every day. It's not every day you get an 18-year-old. <laughs> uh, that's two episodes in a row now that we've mentioned that. Oh, wow. So, and this is also the second Chad episode in a row. All so right. we had Extra Crispy last week, and uh-huh. we have uh, Original, original recipe, recipe Yep. this week. Right. Mm. Um, but yes, we also brought up Sarah's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful turn of phrase. <laughs> it's not every day that you get to have an 18-year-old. It's true. Um, anyway. I think that's one of the reasons, though, that I like it so much is that it isn't overly oaky right. for being mm-hmm. 24 years old. Yep. And I think that that almost natural mellowing process that happened in Scotland mm-hmm. 
made it a better product. If it's going to be this age, yeah. You know, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, I understand the reservation at face value when you see that it's, you know, half aged here, half aged in another country. Mm-hmm. But I think it turned into a really good product. I mean, it, I think it's a great experiment. I mean, you yeah. know, we, we need to do things like this because we might just stumble upon, you know, the next the big next, thing, the next great thing to do with whiskey. Yeah. Um, All right, Marie. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's real good. <laughs> but I mean, it is expensive. Yeah, how much was this? That, that's what I was saying. It was like $300. Okay, yeah. So, um, I've I've only ever had it, you know, because of other people. And truth be told, it's, I've only really ever had it because of Fred. Um, yeah. Because he, he bought a bottle, brought it in once, and then brought it in again for the meetup a few weeks back. Yeah. It's got a little, and, a little coffee bean stored in there, which I'm not... You don't like coffee. Down with coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like coffee. I don't know. I, f- so. I feel like, you know, yes, it is good. I do enjoy it. And I'm very glad to have put that experience point, you know, <laughs> put that tick mark on there that I've that I've had that. Yeah. I think that's a large or small part of, depending on the whiskey drinker, but, you know, part of the experience. Like, me, I want to try everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> everything. Yeah. I have those experience points. So, I'm very grateful for that. Um. When you come down to would I have spent three hundred dollars on it for what is in the glass, then that's when I start comparing it to things that I have spent close to three hundred or even less. Yeah, that I may have enjoyed more to kind of figure out like how I really feel about it. So uh, we'll we'll compare it almost apples to apples. Uh huh. Pappy twenty three. Oh, because that's a three hundred dollar bottle. Yeah. Yeah, after taxes nowadays, you're gonna be spending three hundred bucks on it. Yep. Um, it's Sorry not to as... dox your credit score, by the or the, your credit history. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not as oaky as uh, Pappy Twenty Three, and I like that about it. Yeah, you know, Pappy Twenty Three is just a little over oaked for me. So yeah, I mean, I'd have to try them side by side, but I might actually prefer that over it. Yeah, yeah, I think I do too. Mm-hmm. I mean, just you know, going off of memory. But I, I I just I think it just reads as a more well rounded product in general. The first thing that popped into my head was spending close to that for the William Heaven Hill twelve year, uh, mm. which was one hundred thirty four point four proof. Yeah, and I thought that was exceptional. I felt like there was more flavor. In yeah, that sure. In a longer you know experience. Yeah, <laughs> and would you say it was twelve years? And it's 12 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. 12, 12 years at the 10th level of a warehouse. Yeah. So, I mean, with, <clears throat> I guess we're making the assumption that that's cast strength at 94.8 or 94.9 or whatever it is. Right. Um, I mean, you are kind of seeing two sides of the same coin where one is half as old as the other. Yeah. Just, is that... That is correct. Analogy work? Yeah. I don't even know if that analogy no, really makes a lot of sense. But, perfect. Okay. But, I mean, it, it's, you know, just straight up seeing what's it, what would it have been like before it even went over to Scotland. Right. And so, I mean, if you are happier with a product at about the same price, but half as old, all the power to you. I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, what, what were the first 12 years like over here in Kentucky? Like, was mm-hmm. it... First level was it top level, mid level? You yeah, know, well, yeah. I'd love to have known the proof before it went over there in Scott to Scotland. Yeah, it's just interesting things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I I think in general they do offer. A and and you're right. I do envy the fact that they can do something like this. But yeah. it's such a unique experience. And I mean, of course, they are catering more towards European whiskey drinkers as a whole. But I. I like what they're about. Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool and really unique. They've basically cornered the market by putting out products that have the original source distillery mm-hmm. name on it. Yeah, I mean, I love the transparency. That, <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. And, and kind of what it re- sort of reminds me of is like it's a more affordable 
uh, last drop. <laughs> oh, 100%. You know? Yeah. It's not something that's 20 years old that then rested in stainless steel for 20 years, and, you know, it's $4,800. Uh, it's the most insane thing ever. <laughs> it's, yeah, and 90 proof. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a, a more affordable last drop. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to give him props for that. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad about them at all. I think, aside from being jealous of them, uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome that they get to put something out there that no one else is putting out. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's not just like another barrel pick. It's a completely new experience, which is pretty awesome. I was trying to think, too. I'm pretty sure that the only two bourbons they've put out have been, Well, I guess three, because there were two sister barrels with the turkey. Um, but was the, the, these two Turkey bottles and then the heaven Hill. Mm. So, I mean, that's in and of itself. Yeah. Incredibly cool. Yeah. And unique. Um, all of this is being said, by the way, uh, before you've even tried it. Right. So I, I am excited to get into this with you and see what you think about this product. It's, we're doing a bit of a shorter episode, I guess this week, maybe we'll do longer tips and bits for everybody i don't know how much you've got to recommend but anyway <laughs> um yeah i think that if you're not yet signed up for single cask nation go and do it it doesn't cost anything to sign up this is not a commercial for them or anything by the way like i'm not being paid to say this why are you wearing their t-shirt <laughs> that seems a little weird i also have the logo tattooed on <laughs> on my, your face my lo- on my face oh my gosh i just in, noticed in a, that in this very small teardrop though huh I've also killed a guy. I think he killed a guy. <laughs> Where'd you get a trident? <laughs> oh, I see. And the it's price. a glass stopper. I see where the price comes from. It's yeah, a glass yeah, 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 yeah. topper. No cork here. But it's a barrel-proof turkey. It's a barrel-proof turkey. I'm trying to defend it the best I can in this high pit. See, my voice could get yeah. higher or louder, however you want to call it. Uh, so, once again, for everybody, it's 115.4 proof. Nine years old turkey, $101 a bottle. We're talking about the transparency behind this. I like that they have the tasting notes on the side as yeah. well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. Or at least they're... Uh, I mean, of course, they're, subjective, but yeah, you know. They're subjective tasting notes, but... Oh, also, mm-hmm. nose palette finish and price. That's our, uh, yeah. our, uh, our scoring system. Gotta write that down. In... Wait... NPFP, never pull fleshy piercings. Never pull fleshy piercings. <laughs> That's right. So I will say too, um, I opened this with my my father and my father in law for Father's Day because um, I figured that a unique turkey product made by a father son team was appropriate for yeah. uh, for Father's Day. Mm-hmm. So, um, what'd you think about on your first uh, first little sniff there? Smells good. Smells turkey. <laughs> At what point do you just go, yeah, it's turkey? Like, it, it is it, 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 you don't seem overly wowed by it. Yeah, it's turkey. I guess. <laughs> that was McConaughey's pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pour this over some uh, Texas mesquite charcoal. All right. Yeah. What do y'all think about that? I want to know if he's ever listened to the podcast. I just, just out of curiosity, I would love to know. <laughs> just one one time it's a man of many interests <laughs> never know yeah caramel vanilla i mean your classic turkey classic yeah. bourbon uh flavors that are so in turkey i'm almost getting a plum note in there just a dark fruit in general yeah plum or, or raisin fig yeah that area <laughs> yeah Smells like it's going to be nice and viscous. Nice, exceptional mouthfeel. I don't know. Why don't we find out? Let's find out. I like that ride. Yeah, I am getting raisin on it. Yeah. Almost like sugar-covered raisins. Sweetness. It is very rich. Mm. (laughs) I see you have uh, 
some rest uh, some Russian nesting dolls up there. What do you? How do you feel about them? Because I I just kind of feel like they're full of themselves. Ah, I don't get it. They're full of themselves. I don't get it. Uh, okay, folks. <laughs> Wasn't my design choice, I'll say that. They're literally inside of each other. I don't, is this a sex thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh boy. Anyway. No, it, it's good. It is incredibly viscous. Um that you're right, that dark fruit note hits about midway through the palate and just kind of rides itself all the way out. Now that was factual. That was. I didn't mean to, though. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Nice heat. Ooh. Front part of the tongue. Side cheeks. It gets a little syrupy towards the end. Yeah, pretty exceptional mouthfeel. I, I wish that there was just a little bit of a light note on the finish. It just runs really dark. I mean. Throughout. I felt things go darker before. Yeah. Like, it's not going real dark chocolate or real dark wood. I feel like it's going more dark fruit. I feel like it could be darker. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting, like, smoke, which I think would add to the darkness. For sure. Um, it's not really any heavy amount of smoke or super char. Yeah. You know? You know what it reminds me of the, as the finish is kind of rolling through? Mm. Those grape popsicles with the little cedar stick oh because you know once you get down to it and like you can actually taste the yes the popsicle stick with it yep that's yep. that's what i'm picking up towards the uh-huh 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 the back end into the finish all which right, i right, like right. Yep. it reminds me of being a kid so no you definitely get more of the barrel and this is pretty typical of whiskey but definitely get more of the barrel the more you let it just sit on mm-hmm. the tongue and and sit with that finish no. Ah, it's hot right in the middle of your... <laughs> that alcohol bite on your tongue just really lights you up after the first couple... Of... Anyway. Yep. As I said before, it's $101. Having had it now, do you think the price is justified? I do. I got to be honest, I think so, too. Yeah. I, I I sit a little bit on the fence, but I lean towards that yes side of it. I feel like what I prefer if it were eighty nine ninety nine, sure. Uh, we can <laughs> postulate about that all day long, though. But the fact that there's no competitor to this as mm-hmm. far as exactly what it is, yeah. uh, you know, that could easily add $30 more, and, it, and it's not. For sure. It's just adding, like, you know. Eleven dollars. So, no, I mean, to me, this tastes either like a really, really solid barrel pick or a lower tier LE. You know? Wow. Um, That's high praise. <laughs> well, lower tier. I mean, I mean, but still, saying, I LE. mean, any. I think limited edition does kind of automatically give it a, a leg up. When you're talking about not always, there's some LEs out there that suck. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I just think it's it, it's probably closer to a really really good barrel pick than it is. Yeah, LE tasting. Um, what it's kind of well, I think I, I think this is sort of like the sweet spot for turkey. Nine, you know, between eight and twelve years is yeah. a really solid spot for turkey. Maybe if this were ten or eleven. You might be getting more of the leather and tobacco, which I think would push it more towards like an LE yeah. type of status. I think those are still present, but they're just buried. They're under there. They're buried way deeper underneath those yeah. those dark, rich fruit notes. Uh huh. Um, if you really sit with the finish and kind of work it around, I think yeah. you can sort of start to get that tobacco mm-hmm. leaf and a little bit of that leather. But I'm enjoying it. I am too. Yeah. I'll send a home uh, send a home sample. You're with... gonna send a home sample? Which part of your home can I sample? I want. <laughs> Do you want the uh, bathroom? Uh, yeah, I want. Do you want the some the, of the bathroom, the water heater room, a little bit of the water heater, <laughs> and that banister right there? All right, fine, cool, thanks. Uh, banister's been getting in the way anyway, so <laughs> it's all you. 
Um, I think overall it's a great product. One hundred and one dollars mm-hmm. is nothing to really stick your nose up at. I mean, especially these days. Yeah, but I, I again, the Ooh. pure spectacle of it being a barrel proof turkey. It just, I'm so sold on it. Yeah, you know. So, all right, nose palette finish and price. Each category is out of five. Final Ooh. score is out of twenty. What do you give? What do you give the nose? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I mean. Pretty good, but not the best part of it. Yeah, I agree. I'm sitting at like a 3.5. Hold on, I'm writing my things down. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm a three and a half. That's how I said. What? That's how I said. I thought you said 3.25. No, I said 3.5. Oh, well, I'm at a three and a half. Yeah, is, well, fine. That's different somehow <laughs> in my mind. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that it's out of this world, but it is incredibly enjoyable. Um, and it definitely gets me excited for the palate, at the very least, for, mm-hmm. for drinking it. Um, and I think it works really nicely in tandem with the, the finish as well, um, where you're not really getting <clears throat> a lot of the same things on both ends of it. Like, it bookends the palate super well. Um, by introducing things in their respect, respective quadrants. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the palette is where everything kind of meets together. Yeah. And I, I think it's an incredibly inviting sipper. I don't have any problem, you know, pouring a glass and letting it sit for a while and coming back to it. Um, I like the palette a whole lot. <laughs> I do wish it was a little bit more well-defined, Get maybe, you know give it a little bit more oomph i wish some of that heat that kind of comes on was a little bit quelled you know yeah that kind of gets in the way just a touch not too bad at all yeah. but if we're if, you know if we're being nitpicky i gave the palette a, a, a 375 and i think if that heat was quelled a little bit it would be more up in the four yeah you know? i gave it a four i mean i i again think it's got a lot going for it but mm-hmm. um it just it is is missing just a little bit of brightness and a little bit of a pop, I think, that would make it stellar. A little bit more of a roller coaster ride. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. And it's not that it's one note. It's just it, everything is very present from the get-go. Like, you're, you're not really... <laughs> yeah, it needs to be a little bit more dimensional. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the, the finish, I'm going to bump back down to a 3.5. Um, mm. cause I, I do like the finish again. Um, but I think that it's got about as much depth as the nose does. Hmm. See, I'm a little opposite. I'm enjoying the finish the most. I gave it a four. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the finish is absent of that heat, which was kind of getting in the way of the palette. And I think it just, you know, as we said, it's like, you can sort of drill down to get like that. Uh, leather and and uh, tobacco leaf and some of the some of the age is I think most present in the finish than anywhere else. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it. So yeah, so I gave the finish a f- four. And it's not that I'm not enjoying it. I just not as much as the palette. Not as much as the palette. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's what I think is keeping me going back for it. Uh huh. More than anything. Sure. So I bumped the microphone all over the place. All right, one hundred and one American dollars. Mm-hmm. But but that you can't get you anywhere can't, else. I know, and it's super limited. And if you didn't get it when it came out, you're missing out on it. It's 150 bottles. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to give it a four. Okay. I mean, it, it's it's a little bit more than I think most people would want to spend. But at the same time, it's a bottle that other people aren't going to have around. I don't see any problem with somebody choosing a really good Russell's pick over this, though. Correct. Yeah, that that is true. Um, I I had a three five written down. Did you? I could, you know, I could. I might actually do that. I'm gonna change it to three seven five. Are you? Yeah. So we had pretty similar scores. Yeah, I had a fifteen. 15 out of 20. 
I had a 15 on the dot. Oh, so we both had 15s. Yeah, just in different ways. I'll take it. Yeah, I I hate that... <laughs> I hate to review a product that not everybody might have gotten their hands on. But at the same time, I mean, I, I think that this gives people a good idea of whether or not to pursue whatever the next bourbon release is mm -hmm. from Single Cask Nation. Mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> if you like Warehouse G picks from Russell's, this would definitely be in your ballpark. Yeah. I think. But I am... Um, I'm very happy to have a bottle of this. And what I was trying to say before I completely derailed myself in my <laughs> in that sentence was I will send a sample of this with you home for oh, Sarah as well so I she get can it. so she can try it. Well, thank you. Um yeah, of course. Yeah. Since she was not able to to make it tonight. Yeah. But that's I mean, our uh, yeah, well, sorry. Oh, I was going to say I just went back to the the Turkey 101 that we had poured and I mean, I can see the similarities, but I can definitely also identify where it lacks. You know, of course, you're talking about $101 versus 25. 22, <laughs> yeah. 25? Yeah. Um, and when you look at it that way, is that single cast nation four times better or three times if it's 25, right? Yeah. Um, no, four. Four. Four times better. I don't know if you include it in that, in the times, or not. Anyway, is it four times better? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. I mean, I think it does still have its flaws, but, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's it, it's still uniquely turkey, and yeah. if you got a bottle of it, way to go. I really want to try the other single barrel that they had, too. Sure. It was from uh, Rick House A, mm -hmm. which I always love. Just because of the fact that it's the oldest warehouse on their property, sure, and I just think that the spectacle of that is super cool. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought that the tasting notes for G looked better, read better. Yeah, so that's where I landed. There anyway, you there you go. That's our uh, our review of the Single Cask Nation. If you're just tuning in, Single Cask Nation. Uh, how would how would they tune in to hear? I don't this know. Part? What you, I don't know what you're talking about. It's anyway, a, it's not live. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, what tips and or bits do you have this week? If any, did you bring any to the table? I brought some. I brought some to the table. Yeah, I, I sure did. I sure did. You usually forget. I do. <laughs> um, Mythic Quest, R Raven's Banquet, on uh, Apple Plus. Apple oh, TV is Plus. that the new Rob Rob McElhaney Yes. Show. Yeah, they're, they're, in their, they're in their second season now. Yeah. We just finished season one last night, actually. Really? Uh huh. We watched the first episode months ago, and it was hard. It, it was, was hard to hard hook to get us. through. It was yeah, hard to hook us. I, I didn't really enjoy it that much either. Yeah. So, but I kept hearing how it's like, like some stupid like 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, or like it was just people were just like, uh oh, boom, there goes the zoom. Back on it. Um, Last time that happened, I had to take the back off and hook up the screwdriver. <laughs> I've heard that before. Um, <laughs> We just kept hearing like really rave reviews about it. It's so, like, you know what? We need to give this another try. Let's watch episode two. We watched episode two and it was better. And then we watched episode three. We're like, oh, okay. And uh, episode three, actually, I think, have you watched it? Uh, again, I've only seen the first episode. Just for, okay. Yeah. Episode three is a completely different story. Doesn't have any of the main cast. Really? In it, except in the very end. Um, and it's this really sweet, poignant, sad, also, story. Um, that f goes through the years, and it it eventually h connects back to the main story. You ha you have to stick around for that. But like that, uh, like solo episode was was really good. And the fact they put it in the third episode, I think it was the third or fourth. Like wow, that was interesting choice. Yeah. But it completely worked. And then it just the show just kept getting better and better. That's so cool. Yeah, until the end, and now we're like, okay, this series is really good. It's really good. How, how do you rank it next to Ted Lasso? Ooh, completely different shows. Okay. Um, you get more feels from Ted Lasso. Sure. But you do get feels on this one. Yeah. You do. I still maintain that I think Ted Lasso might be my favorite show of all time. <laughs> Ooh, that's strong. Wow, yeah. Um, I don't know about 
all time, but I'm anxiously awaiting season two. I am too. Yeah. I mean, man, great show. Um, also on Apple. So yeah, get Apple Plus. <laughs> weird, weirdly enough, Apple has had, I mean, I guess now two pretty big hitters. Oh, and I the guess, morning show. But that would be three. I never did watch it, but. Oh, it's good. Yeah. yeah. We were late to it, but it's good. It's coming back. Um, oh, cool. I never watched C. That was like their first one mm-hmm. with Jason Momoa. I never watched that. What was the show with uh, Chris Evans? Oh, uh, did my son murder someone? That one. I think is yeah. what it was called. Pretty much. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> that won't be getting it. Yeah. I think that was just a one season thing. Yeah. Oh, The Servant, which is on there. That has two seasons. We've watched both seasons. Oh, right. Um, might be difficult for new parents just because of the subject matter. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> has to do with bebes. Um, but good. But good. Yeah. But yeah, I'll just put that qualifier in front of it um i guess my overall tip is to get apple tv plus yeah, like i think it's so. worth i think it's worth it yeah I, I really think it's worth it now can you i watched the Billie eilish documentary which is Ooh. on there that was really good yeah mm-hmm. i like her a lot yeah so yeah i'd, I'd have to tune into that mm-hmm. i don't really have a whole lot this week i spent i mean again i spent the I entire mean, you, gotta, you gotta churn out tips and or bits i know but i was weekly I, like i was working no I'm i do just saying, i do you're right you're I'm right just saying yeah. that that's like i yeah you, you would think you would run out i've i've been on the quest recently to play through all the legend of zelda games oh, yes. i'm on um oracle of seasons right now after having beaten oracle of ages okay um not my favorite games in the franchise kind of ocarina of time is that the best majora's mask majora's mask okay that's my i i, I think, think the, it's my favorite i think the original is the best i think you're crazy <laughs> it's no. the hardest game in the world it's the best <laughs> it's actually no zelda 2 is impossible oh zelda 2 i don't even think it was it was sort of like mario 3 if i'm remembering right it wasn't even supposed to be i can't remember Maybe oh i was, think you're right actually yeah something like that yeah i can't remember but doesn't matter yeah um but yeah i'm i'm slowly getting through that um nice. the the problem that i'm running into is that i do most of my video game playing on on handheld instead of like full on console so <clears throat> the next two games that i have after seasons are wind waker and mm. uh twilight princess right so both of those have to be on a console mm. and so i just have to spend more time in front of a TV instead of sitting there on the toilet on the toilet yeah correct <laughs> <laughs> we were all but, thinking it yeah 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 but i i want to try <laughs> to find some way and i i mean i probably shouldn't but doing the equivalent of jailbreaking with my switch mm. so that i can play um those games handheld cuz i only have a switch lite it doesn't hook up to anything oh uh, um, okay i was wondering why it wasn't available on the portable. Is that why? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, in, I, Nintendo contend, continues to confuse me. Nintendo, Nintendo continues to confuse to con- 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 do, contend. What? One scundo. <laughs> um, they they put out the NES and the Super Nintendo virtual consoles for the Switch, and I mean they've got a great library of games, but they haven't done 64 oh, man. yet once they do and golden eyes on there i am getting myself a switch oh i i mean i already love the switch breath of the wild is one of my favorite games of all time mm. um and actually so is uh super mario odyssey mm. super mario odyssey is like s tier mario game for me I, I i'm a huge huge fan of it okay um but i don't understand why they stopped at the super nintendo and didn't move on to GameCube, or excuse me, 64 and then GameCube. I mean, I don't think that they will ever have like a Wii virtual console because it would probably take a thousand hours to download a game or something. (laughs) But, um, and I mean, plenty of people are still playing on a Wii anyway. Sure. You know, um, so I, I, I just am hoping that before I become desperate, something maybe happens and, you know, because this is also the, year of uh zelda's 35th anniversary oh man so (laughs) sorry (laughs) i just want to know when the movie's coming like that is just ripe 
Do you know you know about what happened with the Netflix thing, right? Yeah, they were going to do a Zelda. They were going to do it, and, and then... it got leaked to the public. That's right. And the, the Nintendo, like, not the nah. Nintendo president, the Netflix president was like, Kill it. well, because everybody knows about it, now nobody's getting it. Which is the dumbest, crappiest thing you could do to a fan base. Just yeah. be like, well, you're not getting to play with your toys now, little boy. Yeah. Because you didn't like surprises. Yeah. It's like, just come on, dude. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Legend of Zelda and Metroid need to be movies or TV shows. Ooh, Metroid's got a new game coming out, too, in October. Oh. And it's the, the first side-scrolling Metroid game. <gasps> In, Since the original? No, no, no. In like 15 years. Yeah, because there was Super Metroid that was side scrolling. Yeah. And I mean, they've, you know, oh, they're still working on uh, Metroid Prime 4, which I'm super excited for. I loved all three of those original games. Oh, but, oh, I can't, I can't wait. It's a good time to be a like nostalgic gamer hmm. right now because Nintendo's really catering to us. And I loved Metroid growing up too. And of course, Mario and Zelda were what I cut my teeth on. Yeah. Oh, man. That's why I have really jagged teeth. Oh, anyway. uh, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I think that does it for this week's episode. Okay. Uh, Chad, original recipe. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. Hey, my this pleasure. Week. Uh, people probably already know where to find you, but if uh, anything's changed. There's a new place to find us. You can find us on the TikToks. <laughs> yeah. On them TikToks. How many TikToks do you have? Two. Two how t- many how two many followers TikToks, do you have? Like I don't know, like a hundred or something, something like that. <laughs> You've been grinding harder than I have, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on we're on TikTok. We're gonna try to put put more of those out. Yeah. Uh, but the main place, of course, is youtubecom Uh Instagram is the next place to follow. <clears throat> just at it's yeah. Um, we are on Twitter, but don't even bother. <laughs> you never. I think all you do is have like that automatic post yeah, it's like, from Instagram. Yeah. 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 We just posted a video. <laughs> sure. A photo. Uh, Patreon.com slash Bourbonite if you want to get on a barrel picks. Yeah. And uh, whiskeyambitions.com. I will talk about um, the Foregate on this week's live stream as oh, well. Oh, sure. Too. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll try it off air. Um, but I'll let you guys know on Thursday. Yeah. Well, I'll leave a, leave a sample with you. Yeah. So that. Uh, People know whether or not it's going to be worth it. I'm sure you guys have great pals. I think so. I yeah. think it's good. Well, if you want to follow me, I am at pritter1492 on all social media channels. The show itself is at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you are following us on the Apple Podcasts app, or really, there's a few places where you can do this. Uh, you can leave us a rating and review. The most recent one I discovered is Audible. So, pretty pretty nice that. Uh, there's multiple places for people to find the show, but uh, we do have a new review. Do you have a new? Re- do you have a? Do you have a review? Craig? I do have a new review. Uh, it's from I am Chad E. I'll let you try to figure out who that is after the review. Uh, five stars. He says, "Amazing, absolute fan of the show." Perry and Swan made my dreams come true by allowing me to drink on an episode. <laughs> Chad X Crosby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Twelve out of ten would recommend and buy more skateboards, people. Because he bought our first and only skateboard off oh, of our, cool, uh, cool. our shop. Nice. So thank you, Chad Extra Crispy. Thank you. For uh, leaving that review. And uh, I'll, I'll read off one from Audible as well. If I can, I can pull it up. I can scroll. <laughs> so much scrolling. This one's from Brian. It's five stars. Uh, Title is informative, entertaining, and genuine. It says, this is the best bourbon podcast for all levels of bourbon drinkers. Perry has the perfect mix of, mix, rather, of reviews, interviews, and entertaining content to keep listeners engaged. Highly recommend this for anyone even remotely interested in bourbon. So thank you, Brian. I think that was Brian Bernicke, actually. So, appreciate, Brian everybody, Bernicke. appreciate everybody who supports the show, not just uh, through readings and reviews, telling your friends, becoming a patron. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you can find all of our apparel and merchandise, including those skateboards, at uh, b- 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 bourbonshop.threadless.com. So tired. <laughs> well, you're actually on a skateboard right now. I, so I am on a skateboard. I'm going, I've am going. i been going downhill this entire podcast yeah. as well. It's a really powerful cordless mic. Please, somebody call the police. Yeah. I need help. Oh, God, please help me. I mean, doing the Back show... Back to you in the studio, Chad. Doing the show live from San Francisco when you're going down <laughs> that windy thing is, is really impressive. I'm waving at the tanners as I pass by. Hello. I love your show. Hello, I love DJ. Show. Hi, DJ. Hope, hope Aunt Becky's doing okay. <laughs> Kimmy. 
Anyway. Uh, Bourboshop.threadless.com. It's where you find all of our apparel and merchandise. Uh, you can follow the pod... No, dag on it. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash listen my bourbon podcast. New videos go up every other week. Uh, this week is going to be the first in our series of why blank is the best value in bourbon. And we're going to be talking about rare breed. Super excited for you guys to check that out. You can send us questions or comments to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com. And last but not least, you can become a supporter of the show at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month. And for as little as five bucks a month, you get bonus content, including the pregame chats and early access to YouTube videos as well. Last call will be coming back soon, too. We talked about that in the not so far off future. But that does it for this week. Thank you again, Chad, for hanging out with me. Ah, oh, my pleasure. I saw you zoned out for a second there, didn't you? I was miles away. Yeah, I knew it. All righty. We'll see you guys next week. But until then, I'm Perry, and this, this is, is my bourbon, bourbon podcast. podcast. You didn't even say it. Say it. Are you done? I hate this. I did. You're stupid. <laughs>